What if I told you that this beautiful painting is not as innocent as it seems? At first glance, it appears to be a whimsical delight, but upon closer inspection, it reveals a darker, provocative story. Are you ready to uncover the subtle mysteries that lies with this stunning masterpiece? Have you ever experienced a deep sense of awe and love when looking at a work of art? The answer is probably yes. But uh, what happens when the artwork also raises intriguing questions that make you ponder its meaning and story? The artwork in question is The Swing by jean Henri Fragonard, a French painter from the 18th century. And while the painting certainly depicts a beautiful woman on a swing surrounded by flowers and cherubs, the true story behind it is far from romantic. As you gaze at the painting, you can't help but feel a strange love that seems to emanate from the canvas. You're drawn to the way that the man is looking at the woman, with a mix of hunger, adoration, and maybe a bit of madness. It's as if he's about to devour her with his gaze or burst out of his hiding place in the bushes and claim her as his own. But wait a second, why is he lurking like a stalker in a bush? Of all the places in the world, he's a forbidden lover, sneaking around to meet his paramour in secret. Or is he a voyeur, spying on a couple who are unaware of his presence? Could it be that he's simply a part of the natural environment, an element that enhances the sensuality and mystery of this scene? As we delve deeper into the history of the swing, it's revealed that it was originally commissioned by an unnamed gentleman of the French court. The nobleman, it seems, had a penchant for voyeurism and enjoyed watching his mistress swing higher and higher while he practically froths at the mouth. Although the patron's identity remains a mystery, many art historians speculate that he was the Baron de Saint-Julien, a wealthy and influential member of the French clergy who was also known for his lavish lifestyle and love of the arts. Now, interestingly, Fragonard wasn't the first artist approached for the commission. In fact, the first artist approached for the job was Gabriel Francois Doyen, a highly respected painter of religious history. But when he learned of the painting's salacious subject matter, Doyen refused the commission outright. He couldn't risk his reputation by associating himself with such an unseemly project. And, well, can you blame him? Fortunately for the unnamed patron, Doyen had a recommendation. He suggested that the job should go to jean Honoré Fragonard, a painter known for his elegant portraits of royalty. Little did Fragonard know that he was about to create one of the most scandalous paintings of his time. The swing was a bold departure from the stodgy, formal portraits he had been doing for royalty. It was a daring, irreverent, and wildly entertaining work that captured the spirit of the age. Now, onto the details of the painting itself. As you gaze upon the swing, your eyes are immediately drawn to the vivacious woman in the center of the painting as she swings gracefully from a tree. She is draped in a vibrant pink dress, which spills over the lush red velvet seat beneath her. You can practically feel the sun's ray illuminating her delicate features, casting a heavenly glow upon her. The contrast between her and the verdant greenery surrounding her only serves to enhance her beauty as she gracefully swings through the air. Oh, wait. What's that rustling in the bushes below her? A man lies in wait, his arms outstretched towards her in a giddy, almost frenzied state of excitement. Is it love? Lust? Or perhaps a scandalous combination of both? And just as obscene as the fact that the woman's ankle is showing, a daringly exotic gesture for the time. <laughs> Cue the outraged gasps. And what's this? What exactly is he looking at? Well, you might find yourself scandalized by the answer. As the woman reaches the highest point of her swing, she playfully swings her left leg out, causing her kitten heel to go flying. But don't worry, she has this nice gentleman below who's more than happy to catch it for her as he lies in wait. Savoring every moment of this risque scene as he literally peers up her skirts. Alright, so remember the anonymous French nobleman? Well, it so happens that he wanted a painting of his lover swinging high up in the air while he lurked in the bushes below, gazing up at her skirt. And then here's the real kicker. The woman on the swing is actually married to an older man who happens to be pushing her back and forth. Talk about a tangled web of deceit and desire. As the painting comes alive, 
The husband looks up at his wife with adoring eyes, completely and blissfully unaware of the younger man hiding just feet away in the bushes. The French gentleman of the court had a very specific vision for this painting. I would like you to paint Madame on a swing being pushed by a bishop. He will place me in a way that I'm within reach of seeing the legs of this beautiful child. Even better if you want to brighten up the painting further. <laughs> but little did he know, Fragonard may have had a few tricks up his sleeve. He took a cheeky dig at this weird love triangle by replacing the bishop with the poor husband, who is none the wiser to his wife's extramarital affair. <laughs> poor guy. And if you think about it, the whole setup is nothing short of genius. The frayed ropes of the top of the swing that bind the woman to her husband depict how their marriage is literally falling apart. And the motion of the swing mirrors her indecisive between the two men, her doting husband and her hedonistic lover. But perhaps the most intriguing element of this painting is the sense of control and power that this woman exudes. It's almost as if she's the queen of her own little world, commanding all the attention and admiration. Despite being bound by the ropes of marriage and societal expectation, she remains confident and at ease. She's the only one privy to the scandalous secret that the painting depicts. But hold your horses, there's even more to this painting than meets the eye. As she swings, she coyly kicks up her heels towards the statue of Cupid, who slyly places a finger to his lips, emphasizing the secrecy and thrill of the moment. It's as if she's daring Cupid to reveal her secret love affair, but he knows better than to betray her trust. Like, whatever happens in this lush garden stays in this lush garden. Anyone at that time would have instantly known that statue of Cupid in the background is reminiscent of the menacing statue created by Anthony Maurice Falconet in 1757 for Madame de Pompadour, King Louis XV's mistress. And Fragonard's use of this statue is a subtle dig at the affair that inspired the controversial painting and the scandalous nature of the French court during this time period. But Fragonard didn't just leave it there. Apparently, he was getting a kick out of this whole thing. The placement of the chubby baby statues and the fluffy white dog in the painting adds another layer of intrigue and suspense to the scene. The babies riding the dolphin appear to be shocked and disapproving of the affair happening right in front of them, while the dog barks furiously as if it knows what's really going on and wants to let the whole world know about this woman's infidelity. Nothing beats a canine sense of fidelity, after all. This creates a dynamic interplay between the left and right sides in the painting. On the left, the woman appears carefree and oblivious to the potential consequences of her actions as the cupid eggs her on, while the right side represents fidelity and restraint. The stark contrast between the two sides heightens the tension and makes us wonder, will the sordid affair be exposed? Will there be consequences for the woman and her lover? It seems that Fragonard is inviting us to be detectives and unravel the mystery of what's really going on in this seemingly innocent scene. Now, during the 18th century, private commissions like Fragonard's The Swing were highly coveted by wealthy individuals who sought to display them in intimate cabinets within their homes. Such works depicted a diversion from social norms and were intended for the patron's private pleasure and enjoyment among friends. The swing was no exception and would have remained hidden in such a cabinet, serving as a scandalous delight for the patron and his inner circle. However, the allure of the painting was too great to remain confined to just a select few. The swing became so popular among those who had seen it, it eventually expired Nicholas Deloney to create a print version in 1792. The print could be circulated among a wider audience, although it still remained within the social elite. In the end, Fragonard expertly infused the painting with a sense of playful eroticism, using bold brushstrokes, vibrant colors, and clever symbolism to convey the depravity of the moment. And the result was a masterpiece that captured the spirit of the Rocco era, with its focus on pleasure, indulgence, and frivolity. It is as if Fragonard intentionally lured in viewers with the playful colors and delightful scene only to reveal the darker undertones upon closer examination. Click on one of the two videos on your screen right now.